I'm going to show you how to use Google My Maps to help plan out your trip. Hello, welcome to Trip Hacks DC. My name is Rob. I'm a tour guide here in the nation's capital. If you're interested in Washington DC and you're looking for the best tips, tricks, and hacks for exploring the city, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss anything in the future. And after you're done watching Trip Hacks DC videos, head on over to TripHacksDC.com for even more. Everyone knows that Google Maps is one of the best apps that you can use when you're traveling. But a lot fewer people know about a similar app called Google My Maps. I personally use this whenever I travel, and it really helps me plan out my trip. I'm here at my computer to show you exactly how I use this app and how you can too. And I'm curious if you use Google My Maps when you travel. Leave a comment on this video and let me know. Or if you don't, after the video is over, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know if you think you will. With all of that said, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is go ahead and type in google.com slash my maps. And if you've created some before, like I have, you'll see that it pulls up a list of all the maps that you've already created. If not, you won't see anything here, but regardless, you can go ahead and click on this red button that says create a new map. It's gonna pull up a blank map of the United States, which is a perfectly great place to start. The first thing you always wanna do is to give your map a title so that you can remember what it is when you're looking for it later. So if you're using this to plan your trip, you can call it Washington DC trip. And if you're gonna have more than one map or you just like to keep track of things, a description is helpful too. And then go ahead and click save. Now what I usually like to do first is to just zoom in on the place where I'm going. In this case, that would be Washington DC. So you can either you know, find it on the map and then use your mouse to zoom in, or you can just go ahead and type it in in the search bar up here like I'm doing right now. And it'll zoom in right to Washington DC. So I'm not gonna save this to the map because this isn't uh, something that I need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close that. Now, before I get started, what I usually do is to create a few layers on my map. You're gonna save everything that you're creating into these layers. Now you could do everything in one layer and just make a bunch of points of interest and put them all in one layer, but I like to keep them separate uh, for a reason that I'm gonna show you a little bit later. So over here on the left, you're gonna see that uh, by default, it gives you one called untitled layer. So you can go ahead and change that. Now, the first thing I usually do is to create a layer called hotel. And that's where I'm gonna save the hotel where I'm staying so that I can always remember exactly where in the city my home base is located. And then I'm gonna create some new layers. So right up here, you see add layer, go ahead and click that. And it'll give you another untitled layer. I usually like to do one that's called sites or things to see, things to do, something like that. And I'm gonna put all the things that I wanna do into this layer. I'm gonna add another one called restaurants because eating out is one of the best parts of going on a vacation for me. So I like to save lots of restaurants that I might wanna check out into there. And then since I'm a big coffee person, I like to create a layer called coffee as well and save some coffee places that I might wanna check out in that layer. So right now I've got four layers. None of them have anything in it, but that's going to change shortly. So first let's go ahead and add a hotel. So let's say that I decided I'm staying at the Willard, a great hotel, great location, and one of the ones that I recommend in my recommended hotels and areas to stay. So I just searched for it up here in the search bar and it found it. It knows exactly where it is, 1400 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest. That is where it is. And so I wanna add this to the map so I can do that just by clicking the add to map button right there. And now it's part of my map. Now you'll notice because I had the coffee layer selected, it actually put it in the wrong layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag it up to my hotel layer up at the top. And then the other thing that I like to do, this is optional, but I find it to be rather helpful, is to color my points of interest, different colors, so that I can keep things a little bit separate. So you can do this a few ways. If you still have uh, this dialog box pulled up, you can click on the little pink can right there to style it. Or if you're over here on the left, you can click on the little pink can there as well. So I like to make my hotel a nice bright, uh, bold color, so this orange looks good to me. And then by default, it makes it a little pin. You can change that if you wanna make it this little hotel icon. That way you can remember that it is the hotel. So now we've got that saved. You can start adding in some of the sites that you might wanna see. So I recommend everyone check out the Capitol Visitor Center, do a tour over there. So that's a good one to add. So I searched for that, it found it, and I click add to map. And again, it put it in the wrong layer, so I'm just gonna go ahead and move that down to sites, which is where I want to have it. 
I highly recommend the Library of Congress, one of my favorite buildings in the city. So I'm going to go ahead and add that one to the map. That time it did put it in the right layer. And the National Zoo, very popular, especially this time of year. We've got zoo lights going on if you're watching this in December. And so that is a very popular thing to do. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to the map. Now, if you're doing this for real, you're probably going to have a lot more than three. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to leave it at three and move on from there. So next thing I want to do is click down to my restaurants layer, and I want to start adding some restaurants that I might be interested in. If you've watched my video about the hole in the wall burrito restaurant, you might remember that there's a restaurant called the Well-Dressed Burrito. I'm going to add that to my map because I think I might want to check that out. And I'm going to add one of my favorite restaurants near the zoo called Duke's Counter. I mentioned that one in my zoo tips video. Add that one. And then I'm going to add a restaurant that was highly recommended in the restaurants episode of the Trip Hacks DC podcast called The Dabney. So I'm going to add that one as well. And then lastly, some coffee places I might want to check out. If you listen to the podcast episode about coffee, Swings was brought up a few times. I'm going to add Swings Coffee onto the map there. Go ahead and add that. And I also like Compass Coffee. Now they have a few locations, so I can either add all of them if I you know, just want to go to one of them and want to see where they're all located, or if I know there's one in particular that I want to go to, I can select that one in particular. So I'm going to add the 7th Street location for Compass. Go ahead and add that to the map. So the cool thing is that once you've got your uh, site set up and your restaurants and any other place that you want to add to this map, it makes it really easy to visualize because all you need to do is zoom out and all of a sudden you can start to see where things are located. So here's my hotel right in the center and then all my points of interest are around the city. And this is where I think it's really useful to style your uh, points of interest. So I'm going to keep the sites this blue pin. Uh, that's perfectly fine. For the restaurants, I think I'm going to make those a nice green color and I'm going to change the icon to the fork and knife. That way it'll keep it separate. So I'll do that for some of my other restaurants. And then for my coffee spots, I'll make it this brown color and I'm going to look at all the icons because I want to find one that looks like a cup of coffee. And this one looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and use that one for my coffee spots. So now when you're looking at this map, things become a little bit easier to interpret. You know that the green spots are your restaurants. You know that the brown spots are your coffee shops and the blue ones are the sites that you're interested in seeing. And the reason why I created these as separate layers, like I mentioned earlier, is because maybe I added a whole bunch of restaurants to my list and it's getting a little bit overwhelming. Well, I can just turn off that layer and all my restaurants are gone. I can turn off my coffee shops and now they're gone. So this makes it easier to visualize exactly the things that you want to see. Now, the other reason why this is a really useful thing to do is because it helps you plan your trip. So in the mistakes that Washington DC travelers make video uh, or rather podcast, we mentioned that one of the mistakes people make is jumping from one part of the city to the other because they didn't plan their trip geographically. And what I mean by this is if you're up here exploring the zoo, you don't really want to go to lunch all the way down, you know, by the Capitol. If you're over by the Capitol, you don't want to do lunch way up by the zoo. You want to make sure that you're planning things in the locations that make the most sense, which is why I added one of my favorite zoo restaurants, Duke's Counter. So that when you're thinking about what you're going to do on a particular day, you might say, okay, well, I'm going to head up to the zoo in the morning. There's a restaurant I want to do right nearby. So we can think about doing that right afterwards. And that way you don't waste time traveling from one end of the city to the other. You don't waste money traveling from one part of the city to the other. And it really helps plan out your days. And this is especially useful if you're going to be here for, you know, more than a few days. And you want to really think about what it's going to be like on day one, what it's going to be like on day two. And that way you really minimize the amount of travel you're doing and really uh, makes, a, makes for a better experience. And the reason I like having the hotel here as well is because it gives you a sense of where everything is in relation to where your home base is. Because sometimes you might go out in the morning, you might do an activity in the afternoon, and you wanna go back and just rest for a little while before you head out for dinner, before you head out for your evening activities. And so to know where that is in relation to everything else is really important. Okay, so before we wrap this up, I just wanna pull out my phone and show you, once you've created the map, how you're actually going to use it once you're here. Okay, so the first thing you'll wanna do is just to 
Use the Play Store or the Apple Store on your phone to navigate over to Google My Maps. Now, most people are going to have Google Maps installed on their phone already, especially if you use it on a regular basis. But Google My Maps is typically not installed by default. So go ahead and find it. If you haven't installed it yet, go ahead and install it. Once it's open, you'll get a list of all of the maps that you've created. Now you can see on mine, I already have five maps because I created some earlier to share with uh, TripHax DC videos, etc. But the one I just created is called Washington DC Trip. So I can go ahead and tap and open that right up on my phone. And it looks exactly the same as the map I just made on the computer. So super easy to zoom, to see where I'm staying to look at where things are in relation to where I'm going to be, and to generally, you know, once you're here, uh, figure out how to get from one place to the other. Now, I have to warn that this does not do navigation, and if I have one suggestion for Google, it's that they've gotta add navigation into this app, because just knowing where things are isn't quite good enough. You eventually are gonna need to actually get there. So if you remember from my apps for Washington DC video, I highly recommend City Mapper excellent app, but this app, My Maps, really great for helping to plan your trip, to help plan your days. Once you're here, you can switch over to regular Google Maps, you can switch over to City Mapper to get around. And that's it, so it's really not too complicated. Hopefully I've been able to show you in this episode how I use Google My Maps, and now you will be able to use it to help plan out your trip as well. And if you're coming to DC and wanna watch another Trip Hacks DC video, go ahead and click or tap right over here. If you're interested in signing up for a Trip Hacks DC guided tour, you can click on the capital dome on the left side of my head. That'll send you right over to triphexdc.com where you can see all of the tours that we offer. Enjoy your trip.